Hey guys, you're still tuned in here with us at V Buzz with Juanita and myself, Jay Walia. Now we're about to talk about the topic on urban farming. Urban farming has become an increasingly popular trend right here in Malaysia. City mm. dwellers are rolling up their sleeves and planting seeds within or near the confines of their home to produce fresh and healthy food. But just how healthy is the food that we grow at home? Hmm. Mm. Is urban farming really helping the ecosystem? Well, we find out today with the founder of the Lu Urban Farm, a modern society sustainable farm that yields fresh, non-toxic, pesticide and antibiotic-free produce for consumption. Welcome to Vivas, Mr. Philip Liu. Hello. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, Tell okay. us, how, how do you get started in gardening? Well, uh, I'm a kampong boy who <laughs> used to grow food for our own sustainable yeah. uh, oh, okay. mm -hmm. So, um, my bonding to uh, gardening or farming has never gone away, uh, uh, even after so many years in the urban cities. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. So you always made it a point to keep gardening. Uh, keep well, I don't have a chance to do that in the, in, in in urban cities, yeah. urban living. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I have not been doing any gardening uh, yeah. until I start uh, Lu Urban Farm. Actually, yeah. could you tell yeah. us about you know what led you to start Lu Urban Farm? Well, uh, there are pull and push factors. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think. Um, one of the many factors that is uh, pushing me to do it uh, is, you know, uh, I've been in the IT field for the past 20 years. Okay. Um, being in IT field, you know, the, it's very hectic, it's very yeah. fast-paced kind of thing. And um, my cholesterol has been going up year by year until okay. some point one before I start doing this. And at the same time, uh, I fall sick so frequently that almost mm -hmm. uh, every three months I, I have to take antibiotic to address uh, flu, so throat and things like that. Yeah. And, I, and I, I don't see that I should continue to depend on drugs for the rest yeah. of my time, so yeah. uh, for, for my life. Yeah. So uh, I've been searching for something alternative to do it. Yeah. So that's how I, uh, I get into uh, know about aquaponics. A, yeah. a schoolmate that shared with me, with me his experience in uh, learning aquaponics in US and wanted to retire back to you know grow uh, his own food at the backyard. You know. Mm. So that. I, I think that's an amazing thing. Yeah. So uh, at the same time, so I found Avata in Taiwan. So okay. yeah, I, I went to Avata to learn about aquaponics. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Taiwan, I also learned about permaculture. Yeah. Uh, and also I also learned about uh, vertical farming, aeroponics yeah. for my teachers from China, actually, in Taiwan. Right. We are hearing all these different yeah. terms, you know, aquaponics, right. you know, yeah. vertical farming. Could right. you maybe define what these things mean to us? Right. Uh, well, it sounds very technical yeah. in a sense, yeah. Uh, and um, uh, <coughs> putting the, all the complexity in, in, in a simple way is uh, what uh, Lu Urban Farm, what I do after coming back to Malaysia, yeah. mm -hmm. I, I see that this, there is an empty space here. Mm. That, you know, a lot of people are doing gardening, are doing farming to, to, to do everything the old uh, conventional ways. Yeah. Yeah, uh, what I do, I tr I'm trying to uh, do something very different. So yeah. I actually put all these different amazing uh, farming methods okay. and uh, put them together in right. an integrated system mm -hmm. where a uh, little urban farm is being formed. Okay. Yeah. yeah, tell us about the techniques in in urban farming. Right. Tell us about the okay. techniques that you. Uh, what it well, means. there are many many ways you can do uh, urban yeah. farming, like in the conventional soil planting that very yeah. people are so familiar with, and mm. then a lot of people also give up because they say, no, I'm not a green fingers. Everything I yeah. plant dies, you know, kind yeah. of thing, uh, and also. There are certain times that people also uh, go into uh, raised bed, uh, fertigation, mm -hmm. uh, planting in the, bin, in, in the bin bag kind of thing, and also uh, hydroponics at one time. Yeah, uh, But uh, aquaponic has always remained, to my, in my opinion, in Malaysia, uh, very much on the hobby level. Okay. Uh, no, there's not, there are people who are trying to uh, bring it to the commercial level, but mm -hmm. I think uh, there's a great barrier uh, due to uh, lacking in terms of expertise, knowledge and support and things right. like that. Yeah. So what, how does aquaponics work actually? Mm. Do you plant it right. in, in, in the water? Yeah. Or how, how does it work? I know right. there's fishes involved <laughs> somewhat. Right. Uh, aquaponics is a very sustainable uh, farming method where uh, it is a bio-ecosystem. Uh, it's a symbiosis between the fish and the plant. Okay. Uh, in the normal way that we, we rear fish, we need to change the water on a regular basis yeah. because uh, if everybody knows that if you don't change the water, the fish will die. Yeah. But little people know that what actually caused the fish to die. Mm. 
Yeah. Oxygen. Uh, not is really it? oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't that's know. Where, uh. That's where the, the interesting part comes in. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, it's the accumulations of the uh, fish discharge, yeah? the okay. pee mm. and the poo, yeah. uh, that is become uh, uh, accumulating ammonia and nitrates. Okay. Yeah, and this ammonia and nitrate become a toxic to the fish. If you don't actually get rid from the water, yeah. uh, the fish will die of toxicity. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, uh, this ammonia and nitrate is a perfect natural fertilizer to the plant. It's plant food. Yeah, mm. right. There's food for the plant. Yeah. yeah. But the poison to the fish. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So when you put these two amazing th uh, th these two things together, they become a symbiosis. Mm. Yeah. The fish waste become the food to the plant. Yeah. The plant actually cleanses the water and go back to the fish in a closed loop system in a very efficient and so, uh, 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 perpetual kind of. Uh, uh, wow. So it's system. one non-stop cycle right, right there. Yeah, right. And there's yeah. also bacteria that plays a part in exactly. the purification yeah. as well. Well. Right. Yeah. So uh, that is we call it nitrification process. Yeah. yeah. The actually there are different types of bacteria that actually uh, change ammonia or uh, and to, to nitrate yeah. NO2 and uh, and for, there are also another another type of bacteria change NO2 to NO3 that is oh. food readily uh, yeah. absorbed by plants. By plants it? itself, right. the yeah. naturally occurring nitrates. As, exactly. Itself. Yeah. So in many many of the aquaponic system, we also uh, add in earthworm. Yeah. Uh, to actually uh, uh, helps us to further break down the fish yeah. waste, the solid waste. So it's system. a whole biosystem, ecosystem uh, yes, existing exactly. right there. Yeah. Now you so mentioned permaculture right. a little right. earlier. Just like, could yeah. you tell us what that is? Well, uh, permaculture is um, is something that we grow uh, plants uh, uh, in a very natural way. Okay. Uh, we in uh, permaculture we 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 emphasize on the three R: reduce, reuse, and recycle. Okay. Yeah. So, for example, the farm that I went to learn in uh, Taip, uh, in Taipei, uh, Yangming San, um, we don't have any detergent in the in the farm. Oh wow. Uh, we cook using woods, and uh, and that's where I the. It brings back my memory of my old, yeah. uh, my, my, my my childhood, where we actually cook using the 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 the, the wood stove, you know. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, that and that uh, they have a kind of stove that we call rocket stove, yeah. and uh, with a very little woods, it can actually give a very very huge flames. Mm. Wow. If you go to my Facebook and maybe uh, YouTube, mm -hmm. you would have seen uh, see. some of my, uh, my, my video clips yeah. about uh, so uh, rocket stuff. culture is yeah. about subsisting of what is yeah, around it, uh, you as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. actually strives for the eco-balances of okay. the system, so it, we actually uh, subdivide our, our land yeah. mm -hmm. to different different zones okay. and different different zones with plant and, and complement with different different type mm. plants and the the f zone f the furthest zone uh, we actually leave it as a natural uh, kind of forest kind of thing okay. so that whole Hi. thing blend together and that uh, uh, achieve the eco balances. Okay. So within that kind of balances, uh, we do not need any pesticide, yep. and mm -hmm. we uh, everything is so organic in that in that kind of farm. Brilliant. That's fantastic, right. yeah. and that's yeah. exactly what you do with uh, Lu Urban Farm, well, right? Can you we, uh, Lu Urban Farm, being a farm in the city, yeah. is not big enough to yeah. uh, implement the, the whole concept of mm -hmm. permaculture. Yeah, uh, being a uh, in the urbanization uh, society today, uh, we are trying to bring uh, permaculture concept into urbanized uh, mm -hmm. uh, cities, and we call it urban permaculture. Okay. Yeah. So in Lu Urban Farm, uh, I, I actually try to incorporate all these things into a whole integrated uh, farm. Mm -hmm. right. uh, uh, hopefully, that you know, uh, I can share this more yeah. with uh, the, the community and uh, what, uh, the, the yeah. people around us. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So how do you how do you enable you know every home to sustainably grow their own produce because it's not we we you know sometimes we only have our terrace houses yeah. Yeah. that we have to grow yeah. our plants in so exactly. how do you do that? That's a challenge that I, I put to myself. Mm. <laughs> you know uh, we we know there are so many methods that you can grow your food you have grow your plants yeah, yeah. but. Uh, we always have the problem of uh, either we don't have the space, yeah. we don't have the right uh, uh, soil yeah. and mm. accounting. Yeah. Uh, therefore, by integrating aeroponics, vertical farming onto yeah. aquaponics, it becomes a perfect solution uh -huh. uh, to urban farmers uh, uh, growing your food. For example, uh, my system of uh, a space that is half of your bench, okay. three by two, Three feet by two square feet, okay, wow. yeah, mm -hmm. right? So can grow more than 100 plants and five fish. 
Wow. What? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so it, even if you right. live in a condo, you can even use the system yes, as yeah, well. Yes, exactly. You have small balcony, can actually fit into the system. Uh, but the only thing that you need direct sunlight. You need about three to uh, four to mm -hmm. four to five hours direct sunlight, and yeah. you would be able to grow your own food right in your balcony. Oh, wow! How right. easy or how difficult is it to maintain? I mean, most adults out there, these right. especially in the city, yes. they go to work in the right. morning, they come back yeah. only at night. So, how much right. of maintenance is involved? Yeah. Uh, basically, to uh, to build the system or to um, kind of uh, configure the system, yeah. it may be a lot of uh, uh, technicality that involved, yeah. but just like driving cars, yeah? mm -hmm. building a car is damn yeah. difficult, right? But driving a car is so easy and enjoyable, yeah. right? So same thing goes with aquaponics system. You know? <coughs> building the system can be quite challenging, yeah. Yeah. but once the system is in place, you just enjoy feeding the fish every day, okay. uh, seeing the fish growing, uh, sowing the seed, planting, harvesting, and making sure that water pump is working. And that's it. Okay, that's wow. it. It's just so enjoyable and um, it can be participated from young to old yeah. because yeah. there's no dirty digging, no, no yeah. tedious digging, no watering, no uh, no readings, you know, yeah. uh, and no bending, you know, that is perfectly... Something the whole uh, family can yes, get involved uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think, I think through that kind of uh, gardening or kind of food growing, it also helps to foster the bonding between the families, mm. yeah, yeah. Mm. right, okay. And to, uh, to the greater extent is, uh, uh, when more and more people start to do this, uh, they tend to share their experience with their neighbors. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? They change to, they tend to grow different types of uh, food and then they exchange the food okay. uh, with their neighbors. And I think that also, that brings the kind of bonding to a sense the of next community yeah. as well. Yes, right, yeah, right. You so, don't realize like when you start growing your own produce, you'll yes. have so much that you will need to give it to yeah. your neighbors because right. you can't finish it all. Yes, you know, it's yes. fresh produce yes, exactly. and you're going to grow yeah. some more. Right, yeah. So I think that's, that's a different yeah. kind of satisfaction you get when you grow exactly. your own because my dad my dad right. loves his garden and he grows <laughs> we grow like our own brinjal wow. and our own chili yeah, and right. the other day i took our own our chili from our yeah. garden yeah. and then this is different kind of satisfaction yeah. you know hey this is from my garden yeah. when you see it in your fridge and you take it out hey this is yeah. from my right. own yeah. garden i grew this, I grew yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the level of confidence is so different you know yeah. you buy uh, a vegetable from, from from the market you know yeah uh, is it pesticide free or is it uh, no there's any residuals of a yeah. uh, uh, toxicity in, yeah. in the food that we are dying mm -hmm. we are consuming that given the fact that you know in Malaysia uh, there are more than 70 percent of Malaysian people dies of NCD. NCD mm -hmm. stands for non-communal disease. Yeah. Yeah? That means the disease that is not going to spread from me to you. Yeah. Yeah? It's in, you, you, you acquire the kind of uh, yeah. uh, disease. And yeah. uh, we, we we, we bel I personally believe that that has a lot to do with the diet that we are eating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That actually, you know, uh, uh, leading us to the kind of uh, a lot of health issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And what is the quality of the produce from urban farming? Is it actually <coughs> healthier? Well, uh, this is the very normal questions yeah. that I get from people when we, uh, we talk about urban farming and aquaponics and things. Uh, well, uh, my, my answer to them is uh, seeing is believing. Yep. Tasting is uh, uh, it, tasting it yourself uh, will actually give you the kind of the feel. Uh, but uh, generally, uh, food that's being grown in aquaponic system mm. uh, is very fine and smooth. Like okay. for example, lady's finger in our farm is people are queuing up to, uh, to, to wait for our lady's fingers. Wow. Um, being, a, being a small farm, we can't produce a lot. Uh, yeah. Some people who do not understand, you know, uh, when they say, I, I, I say I have some lady's fingers and say, oh, I want it tomorrow, oh, sorry, uh, it's already booked. Then yeah. why you say you have? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Too fast. No, that, that's a good so problem. Yeah, it's a very yeah, good so, problem there. You know, you know, it's so, so, so popular in our farm. Yeah. There, you, know? you can eat the, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the lady's fingers fresh, Plant yeah. from yeah. the farm. It's so crunchy. It's normal for Malaysians. So you just dip it in the sambal yeah, and eat. Yeah. But the demand, the, the demand for fresh food is yeah. definitely there. Yes, I mean, people, we love there. it. But yeah. is there is the demand for the planting system the same? Uh, Are people actually right. growing their own from, food? I, I have done a survey, uh, yeah. and of course, I have not. Maybe <coughs> this uh, survey is not extensive. But based on my survey, more than. 40% uh, of uh, urbanized people would like to grow their own food in the urban cities mm. yeah. in Malaysia. Yeah. Yeah. So that statistic shows us that you know, more and more people are, uh, are health conscious yeah. and more and more people uh, 
uh, is very concerned about the food they are taking, whether yeah. it is healthy or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By growing yourself, then you are empowered and yeah. you are definitely uh, be assured of yeah. whatever produce that you, 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 you are eating is Because you know what quality. you're putting into exactly. your own and garden. And you have the control. Well. You have the control yeah. whichever way, uh, to what extent of organic you want. Mm -hmm. It is up, up, entirely up to you. Yeah, yeah. But you know, this, this urban farming concept, you know, growing right. your own food has yeah. been going around, you know, in different mm -hmm. parts of the world. You know, right. in America, it's been going yes. on for decades, Correct. Australia and the yeah. UK. Right. Right. Why has it taken so long for it to come to Malaysia? Is it um, difficult to get Malaysians to get on board? Right, I think um, there are, I think, to, in my opinion, there are many factors. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people uh, do one way or another trying to grow their own food from uh, the, the home gardening, yeah. the pots, the potting, you know. Uh, but the thing is, um, I and a lot of them, uh, the ecosystem is not there because a lot of people, we have a lot of gardening for ornamental plants, yeah. flowers, for example, uh, but uh, planting food become a very challenging thing. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, uh, you plant, it dies, you've got nothing to eat, then you get yeah. frustrated, you know. Yeah. But uh, as, as compared to ornamental plant, mm -hmm. you don't get that much of frustration yeah. if you don't get to reap if the If it dies, you it doesn't house. impact you. Yeah, right. Before you see that uh, the, the ornamental gardening is, is a huge business uh -huh. uh, uh, and a lot of people are doing it on a pot and, 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 yeah. and whatsoever. But uh, when it comes to growing food, it becomes more challenging and mm. I think the ecosystem is not there. Okay. Uh, that's where Lu Urban Farms uh, uh, comes to play a role there uh, yeah. and trying to uh, become a one-stop centre for people who like to start their own uh, home uh, growth to create the thing. ecosystem. Yeah. Yes, to create the ecosystem. Yeah. So we actually uh, become a platform to support uh, uh, home gardening from A, a to Z. Uh, oh, you, wow. can, we, we, you can come to buy fresh uh, a produce from our farm yeah. to experience it. Uh, you can come to learn how to do it yourself by, by attending our workshop. Mm -hmm. Our next workshop will be in Miri on 22nd okay. of October. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we also sell the accessories and components yeah. that uh, to, to, you know, after you have learned, you want to do something, yeah. you don't have yeah. this, you don't have that, uh, you know, by looking, uh, getting all these things so become a, a very one difficult stop thing. Yeah, everything. become a one stop center mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, yeah, we also grown, uh, have to come to uh, the stage of consultations. Uh, there are a lot of people who want to grow. Uh, their uh, uh, food on a commercial level. Yep. They're mm -hmm. actually look, working with us, talking to us to actually build that kind of thing. Uh, there are also people who come to us to uh, actually want to implement this in the land landscaping. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. So landscaping is again a big field. Yeah. Uh, a big, yeah. So uh, in the traditional way, uh, we uh, spend a lot of money to do the landscaping, ornamental plant, you know, the, 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 the thing. But it's a uh, Input that does not give you much output yeah. 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 Uh, beside the beautifying thing. Kind. Yeah. Whereas if you can, uh, to me, uh, if you can incorporate aquaponics uh, system into landscaping, yeah. mm. then the whole thing, the whole proposition becomes different. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. not only that you can grow ornamental uh, plant. It's beautiful, but it's ornamental. also good for you. At the same time, yes, yeah. you also can have produce that, you know, uh, yeah. benefit it to, to, to feed the people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. even if you don't want to eat it, you can smell in the morning. It's mm. so, so wow. nice. <laughs> smell your rosemary you, you, and basil. You must come to my farm to smell the mint. Oh, <laughs> I think I would love it. But your system, you know, it, it's, it's wonderful. It's mm, genius. Right. But then, you know, we also run the risk of these real issues. Like yeah. in, in most cities, you know, we have the and yeah, Does right. this actually affect uh, the quality and the growth of right. uh, the yeah, plants? Yeah, I think uh, when you come to problems like haze and things like that, it's very much uh, affect if you are doing uh, fruit-based kind of plants, okay. yeah, mm. and also if you're doing it commercial kind of things, yeah. So because every uh, single factors will actually uh, affect your producers and your returns yeah. of your harvest, for example. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think uh, from a home grower's perspective, mm -hmm. I think the expectation is different. Uh, right. You are planting it for your own consumptions. Mm -hmm. You're not, you are not uh, 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 desperate to get the uh, harvest to sell the thing as per se. Yeah. So I think the, the due to these kind of different expectations, I think that kind of effect is not as critical. Uh, right. uh, uh, beside that, this kind of systems actually uh, it is more resilient yeah. to haze and the, the climatal change because uh, your plant is in a very uh, uh, very well 
taken care yeah. of environment. You right. don't have a lack of water. You won't have lack of yeah. oxygen. It's you also won't have a lack smaller of environment, like a micro as, environment. Exactly. Right yeah. Now you mentioned, yeah. you know, um, home growers as yeah. well. Why is right. it so important for us to start yeah. growing our own food? Well, uh, there are many factors. From I, I from I see it yeah, is from a micro perspective and also from the macro plus yeah. perspective. Yeah, from the micro perspective as well. For 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 example, my, for myself, I talk about my cholesterol and yeah. my uh, 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 antibiotic issues. Yeah. After doing this, uh, my cholesterol has gone down to 5.6 without medications wow. within a year. Uh, and I have not been taking any antibiotics since. Okay. Uh, that's the kind of health benefits mm. that I think uh, I have benefited from doing this thing. Yeah. And I believe that this uh, can be duplicated to other people. Yeah. Uh, and we, if they start to practice similar things, yeah. uh, that's from the macro perspective. Besides, you are growing on your own healthy fresh food. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, on the macro perspective, uh, when everybody starts to grow <coughs> their own food, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, then we actually release farmland. Yeah. We, we need lesser farmland. Uh, I mean, from statistics, more than 80% of world farmable land has already been used. Yeah. And yet, we still do not have enough food yeah. to feed yeah. the world population. Losing more and more forests. Right, and also well. yeah, that, that becomes a, a damage to the whole ecosystem. Yeah. So, it when at the same time, uh, the missionaries and also the transportations to uh, transport the food from the remote farmland to the, to the household, yeah. Yeah. it is release a lot of carbon into the ecosystem that is uh, contributing to the global warming issue. Uh, yeah. Taking, for example, in 2005, for example, the carbon footprint that bring, to, uh, bring food into California yeah. itself is more than 70,000 tons of carbon dioxide. Yikes. How can, you, can you imagine how much carbon dioxide is being released in our atmosphere yearly shipping yeah. food to around the world. Yeah, that's why yeah. it's very, very important right. that we start this. But is there a yep. secret to uh, urban gardening? Uh, well, I don't <laughs> see the secret. <laughs> uh, 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 that is where uh, Lou Urban Farm comes in. We are, uh, we are revealing the secret and mm -hmm. sharing the secret with almost everybody as far as much as we can uh, to know, to encourage, to empower people yep. to grow their, 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 their own food. Uh, mm -hmm. Using our innovation and our planting system, uh, we have a, a system called WAPS. Uh, WAPS system, we call, our, we call our system called WAPS, Vertical Aquaponic Aeroponics yep. Planting System. Mm -hmm. uh, we hope that uh, with this WAP system, we are going to revolutionize and redefine farming yep. in the sense that, you know, uh, it can be as small as a three by two square yep. feet kind of planting system, yeah. scaling up all the way to a full scale commercial farm. Brilliant, right. you know, absolutely fantastic. Right. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us today, okay. Philip. Right. And Thank we you. definitely look forward to dropping by your farm sure. in Penang. Yeah, please. Yeah. There, are, there are people coming from all over the country. Yeah. Uh, some of them, they just uh, drove all the way, flying all the way from Indonesia oh, wow. to my farm to just to see how I've done it and they wanted to do the same. But thank you for coming all the way down to our studio yeah. and you know, you explaining so everything okay. here for us today. I, yeah, I hope it will benefit more people and uh, encourage more people to grow their own food as we well. We definitely will. Definitely. Thank you so much. Okay. I mean, at the end of the day, I think it's your health, you know, yes. that, that you really need right. to take care of. You know how you, people always say, wake up and smell the coffee. I guess you know, you could wake up and smell your fresh produce, the mint, yeah. the <laughs> likes the of that as well. Very, very brilliant but you yeah. know we have yet another brilliant episode of Vivas. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, our national day may have just passed, but we're still keeping things patriotic as we sit down with Tan Sri Dato Raymond Navaratnam to find out more about the day Malaysia achieved independence. Yes, and Jeevan Sahadevan is back mm -hmm. on Vivas to tell us how we can close sales faster than we ever thought possible. Yes, yeah, so you get your pen and pad for that episode ready. You know, definitely lots of tips to take down there. As always, guys, <laughs> keep writing to us. Vibas at astro.com.my, all your comments, suggestions, suggestions, anything and everything, it all goes. And be sure to follow us on Instagram at vbuzz underscore HD. Yes, thank you so much for joining us on the show. I'm Juanita. And I'm Jay Walia. Take care, good night and bye-bye.